I, I, I think, John, before we go, but we, we because of our, our time, yeah. uh, we need to jump right into this uh, resolution. Let's do it. And, and uh, uh, the people need to understand uh, why this took place and what is wrong with it. Since Israel became a nation in 1948, they accepted the partition of the United Nations in November of 1947. At that time, the Palestinian Arabs were to accept with Israel a splitting of this land, and a portion was given to Israel. The portion that was to be given to the Palestinians is what we now call today the West Bank and Gaza. And what happened was when they refused to accept their portion of land, Six Arab nations that were at that meeting, four spoke out, all six got up and left, indicating that they were not going to accept this covenant. They wanted nothing to do with Israel, and they did not want Israel to have any of the land at all. Israel, 1948, after unfortunate wars that were coming against her, and ultimately a significant war of Confederate nations of these Arab armies, five of them, Saudi Arabia not included, came to destroy Israel. Israel was able to miraculously defeat these, declare her independence in May of 1948, and a resolution was set forth, Resolution 181, dealing with the land. Jordan illegally occupied what is now called the West Bank, which was Judea in the Bible, which also housed East Jerusalem. And that land was to be given to the Palestinians who rejected it. Well, when 1967 came along, and the 1967 Six-Day War, Al Nasser in the early 1960s, who was the president of Egypt, gathered the armies together of the different nations of Arabs to once again seek to destroy Israel. That culminated in the 67 war. Israel won the war, again miraculously, and took more land, went into the Judea area, took the Golan Heights and also the Gaza as protection, and also had access once again to East Jerusalem. This land was always Israel's historically, and there has always been a presence of Jews in that land for 3,800 years. These Palestinians, as I said, the name Palestinian is a Philistine, and that word means immigrant. There's no Palestinian people. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's, uh, we brought that out yesterday. It's a hoax. That, that term, when you call them Palestinians, and we do because that's what the media does, but there are no Palestinian people. Yasser Arafat was an Egyptian. Ironically, Egyptians are from the tribe of Ham. They're not even Arab. Arabs are brothers <laughs> to the Semitic tribes of the Jews. Egyptians are Hamitic, meaning they're not related as closely as the Ar true Arabs are to the Israelis or it, the it, Jews. The Palestinians there are Jordanian, Syrian, and Egyptian. And Lebanese, and, 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 and even from other areas as well. But that's the predominant, predominant population. You're correct. Now, this resolution, 2334... Many believe now, and Israel claims they have significant evidence to prove that John Kerry and the Barack Obama administration helped craft and push this idea through when he went to New Zealand, because New Zealand was one of the sponsors of this, to the Security Council of the United Nations. The Security Council resolutions of the United Nations are binding and considered law, legal, I should say it that way, legal, whereas the uh, General Assembly resolutions of the United Nations are not binding. Now, in October of 2000, earlier this year, we found that there were 10 resolutions against Israel at the General Assembly, giving only the Islamic names of historical Jewish sites from UNESCO. So now instead of the Temple Mount, it's now called the Haram al-Sharif, meaning the Dome of the Rock, Barak. the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and then we also have the Barak Wall, which is the where Wait. the winged horse was flown by Muhammad, according to tradition, from there up into heaven. But that was the Wailing Wall. So those names have been changed now, or recognized only as Islamic names. Now we see this resolution, which historically the United States, Resolution 2334, was approved by a 14 to 0 vote in the United Nations. The United States abstained from voting. What that means is this now stands as law legally in the minds of the United Nations, that Israel's settlements are illegal. So any settlements that Israel has made into the West Bank, into East Jerusalem, are now illegal, meaning that Palestinians can sue 
Jews in the International Criminal Court, the ICC, for interloping on their land, meaning that at some future time, any negotiations begin with the idea that Israel's property line goes back to the original. So they could go to the Hague, you're saying, and, yeah. and, and file a suit. No, but Israel's not going to put up with this. No, they, they've already rejected this. But here's the, the rub that we feel that was a betrayal to Israel. Israel is our primary ally. They are our democracy in the Middle East. Israel has never seen the United States not veto. In fact, that has been the policy of the U.S. is to veto these Security Council resolutions mm -hmm. to protect Israel because especially since 1981, we entered into an agreement with Israel that we would protect her, that we would help her to push off and fight against the Russians who were trying to bring destruction to the Middle East. This is part of a long Cold War with Russia, our policy with Israel that we would protect her as being a democracy in the Middle East to protect the region and our business in the Middle East. So Barack Obama and this administration threw Israel under the bus, betrayed Israel, put her in a very compromising position. We're going to have to stop. Okay. Hold that point right there. We've got to take our break. Please, you need to call people, friends, that, that they need to hear.